Hi, it's Erie County. It's Gail Burstein. I am your health commissioner, and I am here today to talk to you about our latest update on COVID-19 in Erie County. So I'm here solo today. Um, Mr. Polencars had a very, very super busy schedule, so he asked me to swing it by myself. So that is what we are going to do. So I'm going to give you today's update. So just as a reminder that the information in this PowerPoint is current just only about as uh, an hour ago, and this is a rapidly changing situation. So what I say today, right now, may not be true by the time this presentation is over. But all the latest and greatest information is on our Erie County COVID website in the, power, in the slide on the bottom. So uh, let's, let's talk about the numbers, the data. So as of this morning, there were a total of 5,313 positive cases out of a total of 38,086 people tested in Erie County. Unfortunately, 472 people have died. And again, we want to reach out to the families and, friend and friends of those loved ones who've deceased and just give our condolences. Uh, and also, we just want to point out that these are all laboratory confirmed deaths. These are not presumed positive cases. These are all laboratory confirmed. Uh, uh, also, on May 20th, there were 178 individuals that were admitted to Erie County hospitals for COVID-19. And of those, 38 were in the intensive care unit and 30 were receiving some airway assistance in the ICU. So I just want to point out, this is an all-time low for, well, not an all-time low, but the low, biggest low we've had in quite a while in Erie County in our hospitals. So this is a slide that is actually a graphic of those data that I just presented. Uh, in the top blue line is looking at all the COVID positive hospital admissions in Erie County uh, from uh, the beginning of May until t uh, two days ago. The red line is the number of uh, ICU admissions in, in, uh, in Erie County hospitals. And the green line is the number of people who were receiving some type of airway assistance, it's mostly ventilator support in Erie County hospitals. And then on the bottom line in purple are our number of hospital related deaths. So I think what's important to take away here, first on the blue line, so we're continuing our downward trend in total hospital admissions, and that's because I hope that everybody is doing their best for their social distance, uh, keeping their masks on, and uh, washing their hands, and uh, you know doing what we need to do to stay healthy and COVID-free. Also, also, as I just pointed out, our ICU admissions are the lowest that we've had uh, this month and probably since last month. So there are a lot less people in the intensive care unit that has been in quite a while in Erie County with COVID-19. And also uh, many uh, less people that are receiving some type of airway assistance. And then in terms of the deaths, I wanna point out that you know, we've had uh, many, many more deaths reported than the numbers depicted in this graph. So that's showing that many of our deaths in Erie County are not occurring in the hospital. They're occurring in the community. We know many of them are occurring in nursing homes and they are occurring throughout the community, not so much, excuse me, not so much in the hospitals. So these data are looking at the uh, number of hospital admissions in blue and the number of hospital discharges in red for COVID-19 by day from May 7th until uh, May 20th. And so you can see uh, you know, on the, uh, the trend for the past couple days, uh, the red line, which are the discharges, has been much higher than the blue line. So again, we are on the right track. So uh, this is looking at all of Western New York uh, hospital admissions for COVID-19 in blue. And then of those, the number that are in the intensive care units in, in uh, yellow. And so you can see that there is a decreasing proportion of both uh, people admitted in the, to the hospitals in Western New York. So all the five counties in Western New York with, uh, with um, COVID-19. And then of those, um, there's even a shrinking number who have been very, very sick in, in the intensive care unit. So we're going in the right direction and we all know what we need to do to keep in that right direction. And uh, we're gonna be talking about just now that there's a lot of, gonna be a lot of temptations happening, I'm sure over the holiday weekend. So we have to think about how we're going to protect ourselves and stay healthy so we don't see another spike up. 
So uh, these are looking at the, uh, all the confirmed cases of uh, COVID-19 um, and uh, that, that have been reported to us uh, since, uh, since this morning uh, by age on the x-axis and by gender where females are in yellow and males are in blue. So you can see that um, starting in the decade of the people in their 20s, you know, we have uh, pretty similar numbers uh, by decade and also um, for, for um, you know, very various reasons um, you we're um, seeing uh, a little bit more of a um, uh, number of uh, females compared to males. So uh, this is looking at our uh, fatalities in Erie County, uh, also by age group on the x-axis and by gender uh, where females are in yellow and males are in blue. So you can see that uh, we, we have many of our deaths, unfortunately, are among our seniors, and especially people who are 80 and up. So I think what that tells us is that we have to continue to focus on protecting our most vulnerable, which are elderly, and then other people in our community with chronic conditions. So remember, we have to make sure that they are able to stay inside. I know we would all love to see our grandparents or, you know, depending like me, um, my parents are in their 80s. Actually, my dad just celebrated his birthday yesterday. So, but you know, we have to see them virtually. I mean, we have to keep them safe. We have to keep them healthy uh, because we have to keep them alive. So remember that over the weekend. So uh, these are data looking at our mortality of the, the people who have died, unfortunately, of Erie County of COVID-19 uh, by race and ethnicity. By race is on the top table and ethnicity is on the bottom table. And so here we're looking in the first column are uh, the, di listed the different races. Um, and on the bottom are the different ethnicities. In the middle column is the proportion of each race of uh, the total number of fatalities. And then on the right-hand column is looking at the, the proportion of, uh, of Erie County residents who meet each of these uh, criteria for race and then on the bottom, ethnicity. So you can see that um, whereas before there's, there was this glaring disparity of, uh, of what we're seeing is a death among uh, people of color um, compared to people who are classified in Caucasians in Erie County. You know, now that we've seen, um, you know, that the, the disease has progressed, you know, throughout our community over time, we're seeing this more e as well uh, equal out. And we're seeing that, you know, similar proportions of uh, people in Erie County who have died as COVID-19 are similar to the proportions that are reported into the census. So this is leveling out just to showing that we are all at risk, especially our seniors and especially people with other chronic conditions. So um, race uh, does play a part of it and ethnicity does play a part of it. However, I think you know age and, and also other chronic conditions are the bigger picture that we have to look at in terms of risk. So let me talk about uh, some of the ways that Erie County has been responding to our COVID epidemic. So um, first of all, we are doing lots of testing. So we are doing diagnostic testing. So again, that is taken, that's a specimen collected with a nose swab, and that is testing for an active virus. So that shows that you are infected at the time that that nose swab was collected. So uh, for people that want to get this test, that they th think that they may have been at risk for some reason, they're symptomatic, they're a contact, um, they're interfacing with the public a lot as an essential worker or even now as a non-essential worker um, and you're worried that you're infected, you can call 716-858-2929 and speak with a call taker. I uh, press the option for, uh, for diagnostic testing. There is foreign language interpretation available, so language should not be a barrier to make an appointment in Erie County. Uh, uh, we don't. We do not require any type of a laboratory uh, order or requisition from a primary care provider. And remember, this is by appointment only. We are not accepting walk-ins. And we're really trying to make this accessible for people. So we're we're hosting these uh, specimen collection clinics for diagnostic testing with the nasal swabs all over the county. So we're in a different place. Um, every single day that we're offering these testing. So, you know, please um, call our hotline and there should be a location that is near you within the next week. 
Um, if there isn't a location near you, again, you are more than welcome to drive where, the, where, uh, where you can get to a location. So um, remember, um, our testing are very precious assets that we have. We're so fortunate in Erie County to have testing, whereas many other parts of New York State and also the United States don't have testing. So if you're able to make an appointment with Erie County or wherever to get a test, please show up. And if you can't show up, please call us so we can cancel the appointment and give that spot to somebody else. It's, we're seeing too many no-shows now, and uh, we really it's not fair to, test these, to waste these slots and waste these assets. Our nurses work really hard, and they're all geared up in this PPE that is very expensive and very hard to come by because they want to test as many people as they can. And so please show up if you have an appointment. Um, and if you can't make an appointment, if you can't make it, please call us and we'll cancel and put somebody else in the slot. Also, um, we've heard that many workplaces are requiring people to have a negative test to return to work. So uh, as a uh, scientist, I can tell you that the type of tests that we do in Erie County and uh, actually for all the laboratories that do in Erie County is a molecular test. So that's looking for RNA or DNA. And even after the virus dies, for weeks after the virus dies, the DNA or the RNA will be hanging out in your airway or you know, hanging out in your nose. It won't be dead, it won't be an active virus, but it'll just kind of be there you know, waiting for your system to clear it out. So it doesn't mean that you have an active infection. So we're encouraging all employers to do the non-test-based strategy to allow people to return to work, and which is over time. So we know that after 10 days, it is like super, super uh, rare, unusual to s people still be shedding virus and be actively infected. So we're encouraging all providers to make sure that their workers who are infected with COVID-19 stay out for a good 10 days and not require a test to return to work because you know that will take weeks and you'll uh, really you could really cripple your workforce uh, for uh, really you know not a good reason. So now we're talking about antibody testing from Erie County. So this has been super popular. We've had our phones have been ringing off the hook for people wanting to schedule an antibody test, which is great. Um, we know we want to help the public know if they've been exposed. You know, so far there have been very, very low numbers that have been exposed. Um, however, um, you know, we, there's really only a limited amount you can do with this information, and so we're kind of spacing out our antibody testing clinics. So we have uh, three clinics a week. And um, right now, they are all full through the rest of May. So next week, we are going to open up scheduling for appointments in the first week of June. So if uh, you were, wanted to test, you weren't able to get in, we said we were full, um, call back uh, starting on Wednesday next week, and hopefully we'll be able to get you in for an antibody test. Remember, we have 100,000 tests purchased. So by the end of this COVID epidemic, there will be a test waiting for you. You will be able to get in. So don't be frustrated. I mean, most people who get tested now are negative. Uh, we haven't seen a lot positive in the community. So, uh, so don't get super frustrated if you can't get a test. We will have a test for you. So if uh, you want to get a test and you can't get into us or you're really not sure where is uh, convenient for you, we have this new resource for, for Erie County residents where we have sh this map that shows all the locations of all the different types of tests, the molecular diagnostic tests and the antibody tests for COVID-19. So this is on a, one of our Erie County websites. It's erie.gov slash COVID test sites because you're looking for a COVID test site. So um, you know, many of these sites uh, do require an appointment. You know, some of these sites uh, require a physician's order. You know, some don't. So if you click on one of these stars, which is a testing site, um, it'll give the details of the hours of operation, the exact address, and whether you need a physician's order or not to get the test. So this is a really a great resource, and we encourage people to use this if they want to get a test, either a molecular diagnostic test or an antibody test. This is a great way to figure out where you can go. And then just want to remind everybody about the commissioner's orders for isolation, because remember, the people are getting tested with a diagnostic test to get diagnosed. So we can identify those who are infected, remove them from the community, put them in isolation, because we want to break that chain of community transmission. So, uh, so we, I have written these commissional orders that are actually legally binding, 
And so uh, if for people to either who have a positive test result or uh, people who have a specimen collected, one of the nasal swabs collected, and they have symptoms um, that were highly suspicious that it's COVID-19 or it's something that could infect other people, those individuals need to be in isolation. So anybody with symptoms who has a specimen collected for COVID-19 or anybody who has a positive test for COVID-19, you need to be in isolation. And someone from the Erie County Health Department will be contacting you uh, very soon, uh, probably around the time that you get your test results and uh, notifying you that you have to be in isolation if your test result is positive, give you instructions what you need to do to be in isolation is just check in, making sure that you're able to do that and explaining to you when you can release yourself from isolation. Now also going to be asking who are your close contacts and so we can put them in quarantine. Again, they could be incubating virus even though they don't have any symptoms and then removing them from the community, trying to break that chain of transmission in the community. So we want to keep our numbers down. So who is not a, who is does not have to comply with the commissioner's orders? Well, who people who don't have any symptoms and they get a COVID-19 specimen collected, uh, then um, you know if they don't have any symptoms, uh, they don't have to be in isolation while they're waiting for their test results. And every anybody who uh, does develop symptoms um, during the time they're waiting for their COVID-19 test results, these are new symptoms. Please put yourself in isolation, and we will be contacting you uh, if the test is positive, or your provider or the health department will be contacting you if the test is negative. So please, please stay in isolation if you have symptoms or if you have a positive test result because we want to keep our numbers down. We do not want in these infectious disease vectors walking around in our community. So um, speaking of what is a risky situation to transmit COVID-19. So this is a pretty cool graphic looking at uh, different uh, types of uh, gatherings that we may have in, in our lives, um, either in our homes or out in the community um, by risk of transmission of COVID-19. So uh, along the x-axis is looking at the different types of activities and along the y-axis is looking for the risk of transmission. So again, uh, green means that uh, there's a very low risk. Um, so that's just you know, s staying in your home, uh, participating in activities with people that you're already living with, not bringing other people into your home, not going outside the home and exposing other people in the home to whatever COVID-19 or other infections are in the community and then bringing it back. So that's the safest situation. The next safest situation is taking a, a walk um, outside in the fresh air where there's more likely to be uh, uh, in the, the aerosols that have COVID-19 to be dissipated um, with a small group of people. Hopefully it's just the people that live in your home, whatever, you wanna keep the group small. So, you, so if somebody's in the group is infected, you won't have this huge outbreak. Uh, the, um, the, the next um, lowest risk, and it's actually starting to get high, is when uh, people have uh, large group gatherings. Remember, small groups, one person's infected, you know, five pe uh, people, five people in a group, one person infected, five people get infected. Large gatherings, 100 people in the group, one person is infected, 100 people are gonna get infected. Many of them are gonna end up in the hospital and the, those will make our numbers go up and we'll have to uh, go backwards on our reopening phase. So um, we wanna make sure we do that. And then the highest risk, um, no matter what we do, is large group gatherings indoors. So please, please, please do not have large group gatherings indoors. We know that the governor has given people the green light um, for uh, religious services, for uh, gatherings of no more than 10 people. So please, if you're gonna do these indoor gatherings to, uh, to worship, please keep it to no more than 10 people. You don't wanna put other people at risk in your congregation. So uh, whatever activities you do, there are things that you can do to decrease the harm of that activity. I think the biggest is wearing a mask, 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 mask. That's the most important thing that we can do to decrease transmission when we're around other people. It'll keep, if we're infected, our infected droplets inside. And if other people infected are talking and their, their respiratory droplets come out, um, hopefully it'll keep their droplets inside their mask and then help ex him prevent exposure with you wearing your mask. Remember, you wanna keep your mouth covered, you wanna keep your, your nose covered, you still have your eyes open, but if you're like me and you're wearing glasses, then that also decreases the risk. So again, 
please think about what your activities are this weekend. You know, some of the beaches are open, the parks are gonna be open, the weather's gonna be beautiful, everybody's gonna go, wanna go outdoors, everybody's gonna wanna see everything else. We've all gone stern crazy, I get that. I'm feeling it too. However, we have to continue to, to practice these uh, protective behaviors. We're wearing a mask, staying away from large groups, or else we'll be right back where we started from and uh, in, in phase zero again. So we have to keep people healthy. Just wanna call out a big thank you for, uh, for our businesses in the community that have been super helpful for us, you know, giving us food and giving us, you know, other resources and like masks and other things to help us with our COVID-19 response in Erie County. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And when we're able to go out and, uh, and buy our favorite products again, you know, please remember that these businesses and uh, keep them in mind to, uh, you know, to, to uh, purchase or get services that, that you may need when we're open again. So, and also, this is the end of EMS week. I just want to call out, give a shout out to our first responders that have been instrumental in our COVID-19 response. Not only doing what we think first responders always do is taking sick people to the hospital, regardless if they have COVID-19 or not, sometimes risking their life to keep other people well and getting them to the hospital to the care that they need. Uh, resuscitating people in their homes, I mean, doing what they need to keep people well. You know, also they've been helping out tremendously with our COVID-19 response in other operations. So I just wanna say, Thank you so much to our EMS workers in the field in Erie County. We really owe you. And then as a pediatrician, I just wanna remind parents, uh, it is okay, it is safe to take your kids for their routine well care. Uh, kids all need immunizations, adult needs immunizations too. So we wanna make sure that kids do get to their primary care providers, their pediatricians, doctor's appointments. So I know that parents of young kids are, you know, they may not have any hair left because they've been pulling it out because it's been a really frustrating experience for them. It's been a really frustrating experience with the kids. Uh, we've all seen meltdowns in our homes. And, uh, and so just look at this as an opportunity to hand your child over for 20 minutes. So you'll give them to the pediatrician's office and you'll have like 20 minutes of <sighs> being able to take a breath. Remember, pediatricians uh, and, and healthcare providers um, for every age, uh, you know, including kids, adults, um, they, have, they have guidelines from the state, they have guidelines for their medical professional organization of how to structure the, uh, the inside of their offices and structure the flow to decrease and really minimize risk of COVID-19 transmission. So uh, the offices have areas for well people, for sick people, offices are scheduling well people at a certain time and only using certain rooms and scheduling sick people for a different time and only using other rooms. So really the risk is, risk is minimal. So healthcare is safe. Um, you should not expect to go in to see your doctor or your kid's doctor and walk out with a COVID-19 infection. It's the same with the hospitals. And we know many of the hospitals are opening up for elective procedures. Again, they're being super vigilant. If anybody has an elective procedure scheduled, you know you have to get a, a diagnostic test for COVID-19 before you get that procedure done. They are, and our, our emergency departments are safe places. So please do not be afraid to forego essential health care. We got to, we have to keep our immunization numbers up because we do not need to have another outbreak in, ad in addition to COVID-19. So please see your health care provider when you need to and make sure that their kids are going to the well child care visits and getting their immunizations as per schedule. Another problem that we're still seeing in Erie County that hasn't gone away is, uh, is our, our OB overdoses uh, being seen in, uh, among our first responders, very busy responding to overdoses in the community. And unfortunately, our medical examiner is, getting, is receiving very high numbers this month of people coming in with suspected overdoses, whether it be opioid or non-opioid. Non um, we're seeing, we think, is a lot of suspected uh, a cocaine that is laced with fentanyl, where people have no idea that there is any type of op uh, fentanyl or opioid in the cocaine or whatever white powder that they're using. So please, please, please be careful. 
Um, we are uh, giving out Narcan in Erie County uh, Health Department. We're still continuing to give those out. You can come, you can give us a call and, uh, and come to one of our uh, distribution sites. Um, we're open um, every day. Also, we're gonna be out in the community over the Memorial Day weekend. So on Memorial Day, between 9.30 and 4 p.m., we're gonna be in the Lafayette Bild Bidwell area of Elmwood Village. Village. Sorry, we're gonna be giving out free Narcan and good health information. Um, and so please, if you're gonna be in the hood and um, Narcan might be a good thing for you or you're, you'd appreciate some health information, you know, please see our people. They're gonna be having a sign of, um, of a picture of the, uh, the Narcan, which is on the upper right hand picture of our slide. And so if you see a, uh, a dose of Narcan with somebody walking around with that sign or standing near that sign, you know that there is free Narcan available for you. So please don't be shy. Um, there are a lot of people that have it in their house and use it, so don't be embarrassed to walk up and get some and, uh, and you know, afraid that other people are gonna look at you because they'll probably say like, oh, that's so smart, I'm glad that they're getting some. I have some in my home anyway. So that, so, and please, if, uh, if it's not Memorial Day, if it's any other day of the week, you can call us at 716-858 7695 and ask for uh, either Narcan doses or our Narcan emergency kits that you can hang on a wall, especially when the businesses are opening up. We really want to make sure that if people are able to go inside, that they have access to Narcan if they need it. So uh, that's all my formal presentation today. So now we are going to take questions and answers from the media. So I am going to start from the top um, and I'm going to ask Ethan from B News if you have any questions. Hey, Dr. Burstein, hope all is well. Uh, I was wondering if you could just speak briefly about the expectation within the county and state health departments in regard to reopening. Uh, you know, one would imagine that inevitably as we open up uh, more sectors of the region, there's going to be a slight rise in cases, if not hospitalizations. Do health officials have a bar set already in determining uh, when it might be time to, I guess, sound the alarm and slow reopening if we see a jump? Well, uh, you know, we alert Erie County residents uh, every day, either by a press release or one of these live streaming announcements of where we are in terms of our epidemic. So, you know, we, the whole county will be informed. We have this information on our website of the time, you know, where we are in terms of our, our numbers creeping up or staying down in terms of total cases and admissions. So it is the uh, New York State, the governor's chamber, that makes the decision of uh, you know when we are, are hitting the bar or uh, to uh, open up in another phase, or when we're hitting the bar that we have to go back a phase. So it's really the governor's chamber that determines this. So what we know we can do is, uh, is do what we can to keep our numbers down. So again, this weekend, it's gonna be nice weather. People are gonna wanna go outside and celebrate. So we have to, remember, we have to think about harm reduction. If you're going to go outside and it's a beautiful day, and I'm sure you will, you know, try to go to a place where there aren't going to be other people. Uh, I know our parks are going to—they're beautiful, and uh, especially a Chestnut Ridge, and a lot of people go there because they're so beautiful. However, you should try to go to a different park. That I you know. Look on our Erie County Parks Department website. You can see where all the, the parks are for Erie County and pick a park you've never been to before that's a little bit far out and uh, hopefully the, the road is less traveled and you'll have a little bit more uh, quiet time and alone time. Wherever you go, bring a mask. Masks are instrumental, they're key of reducing community transmission because uh, that, again, it keeps those infected droplets on the inside part of the mask for people who are wearing them and it keeps them uh, hopefully outside the mask um, if, uh, if people who are infected are uh, don't, not wearing a mask and you know, talking to you or, or nearby you. So please, stay away from other people in the community as much as you can, wear masks as much as you can, wash your hands as much as you can. You know, if you're uh, going climbing somewhere and, uh, or in, uh, you know, in a park taking a walk, uh, you know, touch a rock or a tree, you don't know who the last person was, so you wanna make sure that you wash your hands. Again, masks are essential, staying away from other people are essential, so please try your hardest to do that. And it, it really, it's up to the governor to decide, you know, when we, go to, when we go forward and when we go behind. So we don't have control over that number. However, we do have control over whether our numbers are increasing or decreasing by our behaviors. Next question is going to be Sandy Tan from the Buffalo News. Uh, hi, 
Dr. Burstein. Hi. I was um, interested in the um, chart that you had up regarding the number of confirmed cases broken down by age group, and uh, I think you also had it by gender. Um, as you had pointed out, there seems to be some pretty consistent numbers across many age groups. I'm wondering if you drew any particular conclusions for that. I was also wondering um, if you could actually provide raw data. Um, we have our uh, so the, um, so just looking at the um, the number by age groups, um, we are um, uh, you know with, the, with what we're talking about is um, the people. We know that adults um, of all ages are at risk of getting infected with COVID nineteen, and it's not so much your age group. Once you're an adult, it's really dependent on your behavior. Uh, for children, um, we're not really sure why we, our numbers are lower. Um, there could be several reasons. It could be a testing artifact that we know that kids with COVID-19 are not likely to be as symptomatic as adults. So there's probably less kids that are infected with COVID-19 that are actually being tested. If you don't do a test, you don't have a positive test to report. So we may be missing uh, cases of ch among children in our community with COVID-19. You know, also there's been some more literature uh, that's been published recently that shows that uh, you know, children in you know inside the their nose um, may not have a high as high a density of receptors that the COVID-19 virus binds to and how it enters into people's uh, respiratory systems so that's also you know kind of a, that's also more of a, a theory that that researchers are investigating so we're not really sure you know exactly what are all the reasons that we're not seeing as many cases among children we just know that by adults um, everybody is susceptible and uh, and that uh, it's really more a matter of what your behavior is uh, and not rather what uh, what your age is you know once you're uh, 20 and up and uh, you know we have all our data are um, are listed on our Erie County Health Department website on our COVID website that you are free to peruse when you want and then um, just in terms of um, of uh, you know gender um, you know again it's uh, it's really difficult to, to you know to say um, you know, part of it is a matter of uh, a bias of who's going out to get tested. We know that in general, women have different health-seeking behaviors by men. So maybe that there's a, um, a higher proportion of, uh, of women that are in the community that are getting tested compared to men. So, um, you know, again, I haven't seen any type of uh, like bio explanation why we're, we're seeing a more cases among women than men. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll as uh, time elapses, hopefully we'll have more answers to that. Uh, next question is with um, uh, Stephen at Spectrum News. Hey, Dr. Burstein, um, literally right before you started your press conference, President Trump announced that he's calling on all governors to make the opening church or calling churches an essential service Oops. and is asking all governors to open them immediately. If not, he's going to invoke some sort of authority over them to force them to. Do you think that this is a good idea right now, being in phase one, at least in Western New York? And what should people do if churches do open so they can keep themselves safe? Well, uh, the first the answer to the first question is I think it's a good idea to follow our governor, Andrew Cuomo's recommendations of uh, how to uh, get safely gather. And so right now, our Governor Cuomo is recommending that uh, for people who want to congregate for uh, any type of religious services, that they keep the number of in-person congregation to 10 or less. And so I think that is what we are all planning to do, hopefully, in Erie County. So if, uh, if people want to uh, you know, attend a, uh, a religious service, again, uh, hopefully you know, virtually is a good option for people. So again, you know, we really want to try to keep that number down to 10. Because if, the, if you say you have a group of 10, uh, at a religious service and there's one person in the group that's infected, there'll be 10 people that are at risk of getting infected and we know this is very contagious so there's a good chance that many of those 10 will get infected. If you have a religious service with 100 people in the room and one person infected, then you have 100 people that are at very high risk of getting infected and many of them will get infected and many of those will end up in the hospital. So again, um, we have to be smart and we have to use good choices. Anytime anybody goes anywhere in public, they really should be wearing masks. So again, you know, just because uh, something is open and available um, doesn't mean that it's something that we need to do. So 
Remember when you were a kid and uh, you know the cookie jar was, was there, um, it doesn't mean that you stick your hand in the cookie jar every single time you walk by it. So again, we have to, we, you know, it's, it's personal responsibility and we all have to take that responsibility to keep ourselves, our family members, and our community safe. So, uh, you know, I hope that, uh, that Erie County residents will uh, listen to the smart recommendations of uh, Governor Cuomo and if there are religious services in person, that they will keep it down to 10. And uh, again, again, in Erie County, we are following our state's recommendations. Question from, sure, WBFO, Michael. Dr. Bernstein, good afternoon. Um, actually, I'm kind of following up on the question about churches. Um, yesterday, I uh, covered a protest where folks were uh, demanding everything reopen now, including uh, places of worship. Uh, none of them were wearing masks, and um, a, a state assemblyman was uh, quoted when asked about threats or concerns about uh, about a second wave. His quote was, that's the biggest joke I've ever heard. He uh, referred to some of the strategy as a lie and also said that second wave is never going to happen. Mark my words. That's a direct quote. I just wanted to get your thoughts as a health official on, you know, when elected officials are openly challenging you know, the strategy and even calling concerns about a second wave, in their words, a joke. Well, all I can tell you is that science is truth. And what we, ha we know from science is that if everything opens up again, if we see huge uh, gatherings of people, uh, uh, then we will see another outbreak of COVID-19. You know, we're already starting to see this in states that have opened up. Uh, we're seeing like super high numbers, um, especially in the South where they opened up uh, a week or so ago. And like, we don't wanna be in that situation. So again, the, these recommendations are science-based, they're evidence-based, and so I'm just imploring all Erie County residents to stay within this time frame, stay within this, this framework of, uh, of you know, staying away from other people, avoiding large gatherings, especially inside. When you go out, um, try to stay in uh, your, you know, your family unit. If there has to be you know, another family unit, you know, make sure you keep it in a small group and then wear a mask. So again, you know, we have to think about m these mitigation strategies or harm reduction strategies to keep us healthy. We know scientifically what will happen if we open up full board again. Uh, remember, science is truth and we have to stick with that. Uh, next question is from uh, WIVB. I'm sorry, I cannot read that handwriting. Hi, Dr. Bernstein, it's Marley Puskis. Oh, hey Marley, how are you? other day at uh, the, the briefing in terms of antibody testing results. Uh, County Executive Colin Cards discussed that at this point, 92% of those who have been tested for antibodies came up with negative. I wanted to know if that is just the county testing or if that's including the ones at uh, other facilities. Um, and also, were you surprised at this point that the numbers are uh, so low in terms of the people having antibody testing and in some way is that concerning that it, it, people uh, have not been exposed at this point? Yes, so uh, the answer to your questions is uh, we um, just these these data that we're presenting with antibody testing are from every place that tests antibodies in Erie County. So through the New York State surveillance system, all laboratories are legally obligated to report their antibody testing for COVID-19, both the positives and the negatives to the state health department and then the state health department um, sends the data for each county to that county health department. So the data that we're presenting are all Erie County residents who have been tested for COVID-19 antibodies, not at just our sites. You know, we've only just started our antibody testing venture, so we have a very small proportion of all the antibody tests that are done in Erie County that were, were done by our uh, public health laboratory. So we know that a lot of commercial labs are doing antibody testing, hospitals have been doing antibody testing. There's, there's been antibody testing at other places in the community. You know, it's a relatively easy specimen to collect. It's just a blood draw right now. And, and um, you know, that it doesn't require any type of sophisticated personal protective equipment because you're not, you know, aerosolizing anything from a, of somebody's nose. So, uh, so, you know, so this is, uh, we, we're seeing these antibody test results from all of Erie County. So were, was I surprised that uh, the, the proportion of people who have antibodies is, of those who have been tested have been so low. 
Uh, I think I was surprised. I probably everybody's surprised uh, because you know every uh, all the the media, you know, all the news right now that we're hearing is COVID, COVID, COVID. And so, uh, based on what we're hearing in the media, is we think that everybody must have been exposed. And it turns out not everybody has been exposed. You know, unfortunately, there have been uh, you know, many illnesses in Erie County. I mean, we know that with showing our data. Um, and unfortunately, there have been many people that have required hospitalization, and we've seen too many deaths. However, uh, you know, just in terms of, remember, our Erie County pay population is almost a million. So, uh, so of those million, um, less than 10% have been exposed and infected. So, uh, we, you know, we're hoping that antibodies um, give us some type of protective immunity. We don't really know that for sure right now. And then if they do give immunity, we're not sure how long that'll last. So, uh, so even if they do, if they do offer some immunity for some short of time, we still know that there are a lot of vulnerable people out there that have never been exposed to COVID-19 and have don't have, you know, wouldn't have any type of protective immunity. It also, on the on the positive side, shows that the the strategies that we've been using to prevent the chain of transmission of COVID-19 in our community have been working. So people have been really great about keeping social distancing, wearing masks when they go out, washing their hands. And it also shows us that if, I think that if we can continue doing this, even then when businesses open up, we can still keep those numbers down until a vaccine arrives. Remember, we are buying time until COVID-19 becomes a vaccine preventable disease. So we have to continue with these protective behaviors to keep our community healthy. Uh, so I think Thank we, you. sure. So uh, let's, um, uh, oh, there is one person who joined us late that I do not want to forget is our friends from WBEN. Is it Mike, is that you or somebody else? Sure, it sure is, Gail. Hi. Uh, nursing homes, obviously that's been uh, a lot of the outbreaks have been just catastrophic whenever one happens at nursing homes. But where we currently are in this pandemic, would you say that the worst is behind nursing homes in Erie County or do you think that uh, it could get even worse than it we've, what we've already seen. Well, it, you know, it's difficult to say where we are until we've been there. So I, I, what I do know is that uh, the state that, uh, that regulates nursing homes has been uh, you know, very aggressive about trying to you know, decrease transmission within these nursing homes because we know it is such a vulnerable and precious population in our nursing homes. So the state is going in and they're making sure that all the staff are swabbed, all the residents are swabbed, and uh, you know, people that are residents that are positive you know, either go to uh, you know, a specific part of the nursing home facility that where, where people who are negative, residents that are negative will not be in contact with them. They're making sure that staff that might have no symptoms but still infected with COVID-19 you know, stay out of work and you know, not return to work until they're COVID-19 free. Um, and then we, the governor has also issued executive orders that require that, uh, that staff, all staff in nursing homes are tested with uh, diagnostic tests twice weekly to make sure that you know, there is, um, they, they'll catch them in their incubation period, they'll catch them when they're asymptomatic, um, and making sure that, uh, that those people are identified and do not return to the nursing homes to work. So I think that we're going in the right direction with nursing homes in terms of what we need to do to keep the numbers down. And uh, I assume that this protective behavior will work because that's what we do with any other type of outbreak in, a, in a, any institution. So hopefully, uh, you know, we will see our numbers in our nursing homes start to come down. But you know, time will tell. But I think uh, you know we are doing the right thing um, from the governor's orders to keep our numbers down in the nursing home. So I think we can start again uh, with um, Ethan from B News. Would, would it be possible if I could just jump in, uh, Dr. Bernstein, it's Ashley oh, from WKBW. Sure, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that you were on. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Just a quick question for you, the Seneca Nation announced it's going to begin facing and reopening its casinos in early June, including the Seneca Buffalo Creek Casino, as well as the Seneca Niagara Casino, two popular ones for Erie County and Niagara County residents. Uh, New York State, as you know, has made entertainment in phase four, uh, presumably, Erie County is not going to be in phase four by early June. Are you disappointed by this? Well, uh, you know, again, um, they, you know, uh, people 
feel that they have what they have to do what they have to do um, I'm I you know I don't want to pass judgment however just because a uh, place of entertainment is open doesn't mean you have to go there so we have to think about personal responsibility remember the cookie jar with the because just because the cookie jar is out there and you think nobody's looking doesn't mean you stick your hand in it so we really want to make sure that uh, people understand what the risks are uh, the, if uh, there's a large number of people in these casinos that um, you know that you know and one person in the room has COVID-19 and they're touching the slot machines you know they're touching cards they're touching coins I mean that means that you know if there's say you know 500 people in that same casino there's like 500 people that are going to be at risk of of coming down with COVID-19 and then we'll have this huge outbreak and and then you know we'll slide back to where we were so again you know people have to have to maintain personal responsibility so just because the casinos are open doesn't mean that you should go in them and partake. If uh, you know, if you feel that you you do have to go in for a short period of time, you know, try to make sure that you go maybe in an hour and off time where there aren't a lot of other people there. Uh, try to make sure you know, be definitely wear a mask. A mask is very important. And anytime you touch a slot machine before, or after, anytime you touch a poker chip or a card, wash your hand. Make sure that you have hand sanitizer with you at all times to keep your hands clean. Remember, it's harm reduction. But please, even though these casinos may be open, you know, please have good judgment. We're hoping that Erie County residents will stay away and uh, you know, hopefully our weather will start to will continue to be beautiful and people will be able to do fun things outdoors and uh, you know, hopefully will not be tempted to go to inside these larger gatherings uh, venues. Um, did I miss anybody? Yeah, Steve Brown from Channel 2. Hi, Steve. Hi, Doctor. Um, you noted early on uh, the progress uh, that the county's made with uh, hospital admissions, ICU admissions, airway assists being the lowest they've been in quite some time. We're heading into a weekend, as you noted, that's going to be, uh, looks beautiful to be outside. Um, how anxious are you about how well folks in Erie County may behave keep their distance and wear their masks and do the things that you've been talking about now for 11 plus weeks with all of these temptations as you mentioned all around us for a three-day period how 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 critical is this and how anxious are you about it oh steve you're spot on i mean we are very worried in erie county government uh, especially in the health department that you know people will uh will, you know choose you know not to uh, not to adhere to our non-pharmaceutical interventions and you know people are going stir crazy they really want to go outside want to have good weather they really want to see their friends and so remember we still need to buy time you know we still need to continue with physical distancing social distancing if we do go out in public you know, we still need to wear masks at all time you know even though the weather is nice and you may get a little bit warm behind the mask it's that's still a better situation than a huge outbreak in the community and, and people's lives lost so you know, again just want to impl uh, just beg Erie County residents you know please be smart you know please use good judgment you know please uh, stay away from other people if you're gonna go it's gonna be a beautiful weekend please go taking a hike or a, hike or a walk in a place where there aren't a lot of people um, if you're surprised and you, you see there are other people in the place where in the space where you are you know please have a mask with you and wear that at all times and remember uh, bring uh, good hand sanitizer with you uh, again um, you know I you know we're, uh, we're in a, a free country as, as the demonstrators pointed out yesterday and and uh, hopefully that people will make the smart choices and uh, we'll be able to uh, come out in a week's time or two weeks time and see our numbers continuing to decrease and again it's you know it's personal responsibility it's personal choice and we're just hoping that Erie County residents are able to make smart choices to keep our numbers down thanks did I miss anybody else okay we can start from the top again Ethan from B News all set for today doctor thank you thank you and enjoy the weekend uh, Sandy from Buffalo News. Well, thanks. Thanks. Yes, um, just a, a follow-up. Um, regarding the data for confirmed cases broken down by age group and gender, that information is not on the Department of Health website, so it's be possible for the Department of Health to maybe send it. That would be uh, much appreciated. I did have sure. a question regarding 
Um, great. And in regard to antibody testing, um, I know Erie County um, is now booking out in June, but there are many places that offer um, in many private um, uh, doctor's offices mm -hmm. and urgent care centers that are also offering the antibody testing. Might it be good advice for folks to not just look to the county to um, get antibody tests, but to consider alternatives where they could actually walk in and get tested right away? Sure. If you want to get an antibody test, there are lots of testing sites. And again, the map that I showed early in the presentation will uh, provides all the sites that we're aware of that offer antibody testing or diagnostic testing. So yeah, if um, just one thing to be concerned about is that there are um, some health plans uh, may not co uh, cover um, completely or at all the cost of antibody testing because it's not a diagnostic test. So uh, people should check with their health plan uh, just to make sure that, uh, you know, so they'll know walking in what is covered and what is not covered. But yeah, there are a lot of places. Sorry? They're all free from the county, though. You bet. Okay. Money, cost is, uh, is, should not be a barrier for people getting tested in, for anything in Erie County. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Yep, next question, uh, Steve from uh, Spectrum Buffalo. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, just wondering, I don't think, and I apologize if you did touch on it, but do you have an update on the Kawasaki-like inflammatory disease with children in uh, the county? I know, uh, well, I believe last week you said there were three uh, possible cases. Uh, do you have any update if there's more possible, more, any confirmed, anything like that? No, so far the, uh, there have been no confirmed cases in Erie County. I think that the, those uh, three that we discussed before did not confirm in. So, so far we have not any, had any confirmed cases in Erie County as of yet. However, that can change at any time. So, you know, parents should be on the lookout if their kids have a persistent fever, uh, if, you know, if they have a rash, like a, you know, a red rash or peeling skin, especially around their, their lips and, and their hands. Uh, also, if, uh, the, if we see with this, uh, this syndrome, many kids have uh, some pretty severe abdominal pain, so belly pain. So if you're starting to see those symptoms, you want to call your health care provider or you want to actually, if your, your child doesn't look well, you want to take them to the emergency room. So that, um, you know, it's, it's still a possibility. We haven't quite figured out exactly what the cause is among children. I know that we've had many cases in New York State. Uh, you know, fortunately, we have not had any confirmed in Erie County yet, but that, you know, it's always possible. Thank you so much. Sure. And uh, next question um, from Mike at uh, WBFO, or Michael. Sorry. I'm good. Thank you. For, I'm good. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, anybody from uh, WGRZ? Doctor, I'm fine. Thank you. Great. Uh, WIVB? I'm all set today, Dr. Bernstein. Thank you so much. Great. WKBW? I'm all set. Thank you so much. Great. Well, uh, that concludes our, our, our uh, time together today. So remember, please enjoy the holiday weekend. We're so fortunate like, for like the first time I can remember in forever that we have great weather for Memorial Day. So please be smart, um, be safe, uh, enjoy the outdoors in small groups, uh, and wear a mask. So thanks. Enjoy the weekend. Take care.